Hello everyone watching at home, you're with Adelaide Eternal bringing you round two of our Highlander tournament. I'm Sava McClinton and I'm in the booth here with Beckett Wolf. G'day guys. So we have a matchup here with uh, one of our Hall of Heroes on the left, Brendan Dobson. He's a, a, a staple, he's a, he's a pillar of the <laughs> he's, a he's a staple of the, of the Eternal scene um, and he has... Uh, quite a lot of specialty with running elves and mid rangey type decks as well. Uh, and we're going to see him piling one of them today. Yeah, it's a classic Timmy list. <laughs> the Timmy list. Well, let's <laughs> uh, let's have a Sorry. look at... Yes, yeah, right. We've got um, Luke McLaughlin on the right as well. Whose deck would you like to look at first? Luke let's, is on Zoo. Let's look at... Well, we've seen Brendan's a lot, so let's have a look at Luke's. Okay, excellent. So, uh, Luke is on essentially mox zoo so it's uh you know recently we've had this pointing situation with the uh, uh mox and going back up to three which they originally were at and uh it's still strong i mean when you get to play zoo and you get to run double mox as opposed to triple mox you're still getting broken starts once in a while which is really good so uh have you played against zoo much yeah, uh, I've, I've played against more Stoneforge Zoo, which is the running the yeah. equipment package. But against the Mox Zoo, it's like really scary. I mean, it's just so fast. And if they have a Mox on the first turn, it, it just gets out of control. So yeah. um, since the pointing, they've just lost one Mox, which is the white, the pearl. So um, I think it's still strong. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I every time I play against uh, Zoo and they don't get the Mox on turn one, I don't feel that bad. But when they do, <laughs> I'm quaking in my boots. Like, yeah. that's it's, it's the worst. Especially um, if you lose game one and then oh, you go to game two and you're like, all right, I'm on the play. Like, land in tapped and they go mox land. Go, oh, okay. Always, always <laughs> feels rough. Um, then, uh, if anyone's interested in, in the uh, zoo uh, list itself, you can check out our deck techs. In the 7 Minute 7 Point series. We'll link it to the end of the video as well. But uh, essentially, if we could give you a 30 second summary of what Zoo is, it's all about this menagerie of creatures that you use to smash your opponent's face. Many of them have haste or are uh, more bang for your buck for the amount of mana that you put into them. Like, uh, you know, a 1 mana 2-2 two, two haste in the form of Goblin Guide. Or a... Um, Tarmogoy for at, at two, you know, which is often a four five or a, or a five six. So once you bash their face enough times, you'll leave them on, you know, three or four, and then you can burn them out. That's it. So let's switch over to a deck with an entirely different strategy. So Brennan Dobson is on a, uh, it's essentially an elves deck, essentially the elves shell, but he has so many unique choices within his list that it's become and evolved into something of his own design. And that includes a variety of different combos. Yeah, it really is like a mono green Timmy deck with just like big fatties, but it's supported by genuinely strong cards and uh, ramps that allow it to uh, play at a very competitive level. And um... and combos that let you win games that you shouldn't otherwise win, essentially. Because that's the, that's the issue with the uh, these green decks and green-white Duda decks. If you, you know, if they play something or they damnation you away or they do something that basically lets them stabilise and then you're struggling by drawing mana dorks off the top of your deck, the this deck can just assemble two pieces and a combo out, or three pieces and, and do crazy combos. Uh, if you haven't seen it in action, I'm sure that you'll probably see one in this match. And if you haven't, there's another previous match uh, in the last Highlander tournament where he just goes off with Devoted Druid, the Vizier of Remedies, and then plays Duskwatch Recruiter, draws his entire deck, essentially, puts all of the creatures in his deck into his hand, and then plays all of them off the infinite mana. It's really, really cool. Oh, let's check it out. Alrighty, so our players have shuffled up and uh, looks like they've drawn their seven. They're checking their hands now. Yep, they just got the authority to go ahead. And uh, there's the handshake. So do we know who's on the play? Oh, look at this hand. So Jitter, Path to Exile, some nice uh, lands. Okay. Oh, unfortunately, it looks like quite a slow hand for Brendan. He can have really fast starts with uh, uh, Mana Dorks and... 
you know, he's even got uh, yeah, he's Utopia got Sprawl and stuff like that. But yeah. it's a bit of a slow hand there, unfortunately. And a really nice start from Luke. Yeah, yeah this classic. is this is the absolute best turn one that you want in Zoo, right? Uh, well, aside from Moxen. Moxen are another another thing. So he's just played two of these, not Egyptian god cards. Um, the Expedition. The, yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Expedition god cards. I can't remember. I, don't, I have no idea what they are. They all look the same. They, they're all like... Yeah, that now that's real. That's that's a real card there. So there's the <laughs> there's a tiger that we can clearly see as a tiger, and then there's some kind of other. I assume it's a shock land because it was tapped for mana. Maybe it was a horizon canopy. Who knows? Well, Something underneath. I must have uh, <laughs> incinerate. I'm, oh yes, I must have missed the, the the Japanese incinerate from Mirage. Yeah, it's a beauty. These I are good choices. Luke, Luke was saying he couldn't find one in his collection at all, and it's just a really common cheap card, and he was freaking out because he couldn't find it, and it's. It's not even a great card. It's probably like right on borderline 60th. Okay, that's yeah. really nice wasteland. It's nice not great land. against Zoo, um, but, you know, having a dork... Is, I apologize, Brennan. It was actually a lot faster than I thought. He had the dork and he had a yeah, backup yeah. land and a wasteland. Um, and he had the choice to do that or play neither Reliquary this turn, I believe. But he might not have had... No, he did have the white miner, didn't he? Or was I seeing the wasteland? I'm not sure. Uh, so there's a plateau and... Um, he only needs two mana to operate, really, but he does have a Jitte in hand, so he does want to at some point deploy that, but he'd rather p- deploy Dudas first. Oh, well. If he plays a Jitte now, it probably means that he doesn't have more dudes. Which yeah, is risky. or he just wants to get it before Brendan gets out of hand, because if he can get counters on Jitte, he can just keep killing the dorks, and then Brendan will never be able to um, escalate up to like a big crater hoof or something. Yeah. So there could be logic there. The incinerate is, I mean, giving away that he needed uh, to kill Dudas, and there's a Findhorn Elves on uh, in play now, and so he's playing the Jitter. You're, so you're saying is that he's doing this because he really wants to kill the dudes, right? Yeah, look, I think, you know, if Brennan goes... Uh, okay, so he's gone Knight of the Reliquary. Obviously, Luke didn't know that, but if Brennan had, like, Manadork, Manadork there, um, then Jitty just stops a really powerful turn four, turn five. So this is... a. Uh trade with the one dude that you have and essentially it wipes his board but now luke doesn't have any dudes and he had kind of telegraphed that he didn't have any more dudes but he, it could be a clever a clever play to sandbag the dudes in hand if that was a little bit fast for you guys it was a trade with none of the reliquy and then if you, you'll notice judy's on one counter so luke used that uh, other counter of judy to just ping the elf um yeah killing and... it so that's why judy's on one counter um they obviously verbalized that uh, which is why I went through pretty quick. Um, look, Wrathing the board is real. This is where Brendan has, I think, one opportunity before he gets really blown out by um, by Jit. If well, can land, dude and then attacking, yeah, attaching Jit is, if, is If huge. Brendan can land something good here, like a really decent threat, like Uncaged the Menagerie or something like that. Well, he's not playing uh, anything, so it's possible that his hand is chock-a-block with four drops. So there's Tamagoyf. This is... I, I think now if, now it's Luke yeah yeah I Luke is all really Luke. really um, that was his, the, that was his chance as I was uh, as I was saying Brendan needed something good there to uh, but here's an instant speed something end of turn so that, okay that, yeah oh, right. cool. okay so again this slow a bit slow but um, hopefully so is it getting a four drop or is it a piece of a combo you know like mm, well, it's not going to be four drop because he would have played the fourth land. I guess it's. A... I think he did play the fourth land oh, last did he? turn. Yeah, it's just because he got he used wasteland. Ah, uh, so if, if I'm correct, I'm not sure. I mean, it's hard for us to say. You know, Brennan's whole deck is yeah, pretty so, much. There's so many unique around, combos yeah. and all these other things. So exactly what he gets really depends on what the other. I don't three think he can go are. for a combo piece. He's got the vizier. Oh, and, uh, when there's a time of with a with G- a jitter yeah. ready to kill the thing that you find. Oh, Whoa, he's got a combo he's piece. Going for yeah. It. I, uh, Devoted Druid. I guess Devoted Druid is a ramp spell as well that is also, mm. uh, you know, it's a dork with two toughness. Yeah. So, so in a sense, I guess it eats more Jitty counters. Well, it's a I, stretch. I don't think, yeah, it's a stretch. I don't think that's... <laughs> if you, if, if your got, next dude eats Jitter counters, if you, it probably means that you're losing the game. I think if you... Oh, no, he's got Ramanap Excavator. Okay, that's yes. pretty good. <laughs> See, Ramanap, Ramanap's pretty nice getting Ramanap's Wasteland. really nice. Yeah, and then going, you didn't play a land last turn. I'm hoping you can't equip Jitter, but... Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's if a really, land. really good. Um, I was going to say, if he goes to Druid, Path to Exile, 
uh, he's got a chance, a yeah. really good chance. But but this, like, well, evidently there's no land because there's no GTA equip. Mm. This is, I mean, this is a big turnaround. Yeah, we, we had the favor bar over 90% in to Luke's side, but oh, oh here's oh, a path okay. exile. Yeah, so now we're back to fair again. Yes. Because <laughs> uh, the Tarmogoyf keeps bashing in and it's a 3 4. Tarmogoyf keeps bashing in, but I'd say, like I was saying the last turn, Brendan's got one really good turn to drop something acid because he just had yep. hit it, hit a fourth land off the um, off the path, uh, and Luke's got something out. But uh, yeah, I think this is real down to what Brendan can top deck. Yeah, and yep. he's got such a he's wide got- variety. Of, like Brendan's running so many one drop one drops which is awful here and he's also running so many yeah, seven drops which drop. are awful here yeah, he doesn't want either he wants <laughs> something in the middle of the pack that's not siege rhino because he doesn't have black yeah honestly he wants <laughs> yeah. like night of the reliquary yeah. which is dead oh, Roman app which is dead he wants he wants to run black and have siege rhino <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what he wants in this one situation right now <laughs> but uh so he's cracking a fetch here so going to five i mean titania here would be absolutely insane but it's not because it, it, here comes. Oh, open the armory! Nice. I've not heard that. Card. Open the armory. I've been I've been wanting to brew with this card so much. Um, what so it it's it's bad steel shaper's gift. Okay. Yeah. So it's two mana steel shaper's gift, but in addition, you can also get auras. So the the reason that you can make or make it playable is by finding you know by having one aura in your deck that could be good. I haven't identified what that aura is, you know, rancor or you know, lignify. I don't I don't know what it is going to be, but you know, I'm just throwing out any auras I could think of right then. So don't I'm not saying they're good, okay? <laughs> but I can see it in uh, in zoo equips, and then you have um, you use it to find chain to the rocks. Yeah, so okay. open the armory okay. becomes Change a three mana removal spell. Anyway, uh, just brewing with that at the moment. So um, Luke's got his second land drop here. Yeah, interesting that he put Greaves down before Devoted Druid. I would have thought Devoted Druid first, first, but... No, he did put the Devoted... Oh, no. But, no, yeah, 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 you're but right. now that I think about it, if he puts Greaves down first, it doesn't matter when he puts Devoted Druid down because Devoted Druid will get haste anyway. Correct. And so it doesn't need... Yeah, yeah, so it's the same. He did, so he did, play, he the, he did play the mana dork out. And tried to equip it, but um, there was a removal spell from Luke, so... I think it was just the JIT, was it? JIT yeah, uh, yeah uh, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> By bad, not removal spell. Removal ability, I meant. <laughs> oh, and this is where Burn's so strong. Like, look, he got wastelanded twice, and he missed so many land drops, and he's yeah. just riding the he's goy. still just ride the one like, threat. Like, he's only had two threats in the game, right? right? He goes he goes bash here, and then... Yeah. And then, like, he just and needs one burn spell, and he's pretty yeah, well so, on. so stabilized right now. But it all depends on whether this is Titania. Like, you get Titania here, and you're like, uh, <laughs> yep, got to find the burn spell. This so, Titania, yeah, you get Titania. Wasteland, and Wasteland you. Wasteland you, you and, red, then, yeah. and then equip your Lightning Greaves to it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay, GG's there. Um, so, yeah, that was a really good example of of why Zoo is strong. So it's all about the consistency. And um, when you come up against a deck that doesn't, is very removal light, you can just get there. Just, you know, like Luke's hand wasn't particularly good. I mean, aside from the turn one, three, three, which is uh, basically the best one drop in the deck. um, It it wasn't a particularly explosive hand. It only ever had two threats, that and and Tarmogoyf. And he just managed to leverage the Jitter. And he, I'm, I'm sure that when he opened his hand, he's like, I don't really want this Jitter. I'd rather have a second dude like Zergo or some, something just to have more dudes to apply pressure. But it ended up being really, really good in mm-hmm. the end. Yeah, did he sort of gets him, gets him this like mass amount of... I don't want to say value. It's not quite value. It's like... It's tempo in this, in this particular matchup. He's just trying to tempo, right? Mm. So he's using it. Uh, just to try and clear a blocker, bash face. Now, speaking of side sideboards, uh, so the sideboard from Brendan, what could come in here? I mean, I'm seeing a Thrag Tusk, which seems a little expensive. Yeah, you but know, if you can survive till turn five and then just drop it, like even in that example there, well, you were saying Titania. I think it was a, that was Thrag Tusk. It's the same spot. Puts him out of burn range, blocks and trades with the Goyf, and he gets a little three yeah. three. I mean, um, Batterskull operates in the same role where it's like, oh, it's a five drop that will possibly gain you some life, but it's just not as good as Thrag Tusk because Thrag Tusk is yeah, guaranteed life gain guaranteed, exactly. and guaranteed value off your dudes. Um, do you want to know the cute card that I bring in here against Zoo? What's that? I bring in uh, Eidolon of Rhetoric. 
Okay, explain. So Eidolon Rhetoric is a three drop. That's a storm card. It's an anti-storm card, but it's actually really decent against Zoo. Reason being, uh, so there's a sideboard being shown, but we didn't get I to really see it. I really like Luke's <laughs> wrists there. It's got very nice, I noticed he had blackboarded cards just at the bottom of the cards. Very nice blackboarded cards. He also Luke. sideboarded in and out the same number of cards. Good choice. <laughs> so we don't know what the cards are, but but we fantastic we Luke. Um, so yeah, I was saying the Eidolon of Rhetoric. So the the most important thing about the card is it's a one four, and oh here's the sideboarding. So yeah, Thrag Tusk Batter Skull, like we were saying, and um, Voice of Resurgence. I really don't like Voice of Resurgence against Zoo. Reason being that they always have. Th- almost always have a three toughness or more and you can very rarely trade but if your goal is to buy time voice of resurgence is good because it, it blocks does, twice it does block twice. yeah so it just depends on what your game is is and his game is to combo so he can just use it to buy time but if you if you don't have a combo then it's just value you know you can't really get any value much value off him you just get tempo so uh island of rhetoric one four and uh that blocks everything in the deck Right, yeah. uh, everything that costs one, and, and then it when it comes to two, some kind of double burn yeah, on it. It blocks Kazali Pride Mage. It blocks so many things, right? So it's basically a big wall. And the other other additional benefit is it sometimes slows them down, but that's like five percent of the games. Like when they clamp or something, and they draw a bunch of cards, they can't deploy two burns, two uh, creatures in one turn. But at the end of the day, it's a one four. That's the main reason I'm playing it. Anyway, back to the game. Uh, we have Boreal Druid off a Temple Garden, and uh, you know, I'm sure that if you had a choice to not shock and play a different land, you'd want to you'd want to not shock. But it just indicates that he's probably not any basics. So there's the Lightning Bolt, and this is utmost respect to mana dogs and yeah, definitely. a lot of the time people want to just hold their bolts for value and so on i think if you're playing burn you want to hold your bolts and do the face yeah. but luke's not on burn he's no. on zoo he wants creatures, his creatures exactly he wants yeah. his creatures to be doing the damage and then burn to be finishing them off or removing the creatures that will chump block them um and in this case boreal druid will eventually chump block a dude and boreal druid will also ramp into like kitchen finks next turn for um, Brent, Brendan, so he obviously doesn't want that. Luke got Wastelander, but he's got the Mox Emerald. So, uh, uh the old immune to Wasteland land, eh? Um, yeah, the, the Emerald on the turn after. Is <laughs> so, did he have it in his hand? He was sandbagging it. No Eidolon of Red Eric. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as Luke's sideboards, just quickly, he's he's got price of progress in the side. I would have thought that's a main. Yeah, I don't know that much about flow. Zoo. Flows just a, another removal, so respecting them again. He's also got Gut Shot, which is probably going to come in uh, for the same reasons we've just seen the last two turns, and uh, Arc Trail, which is very similar. Um, yeah. So this is a wild growth on the land, and he's got Strip Mine as well. Ooh. So that, that Mox is doing work. Good, yeah. yeah. Yep. So uh, Brennan drew three points in Wasteland and Strip Mine, and uh, so did Luke. And technically, they evened out. Hey, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> sort of evened out. <laughs> But Luke does have a land heavy hand, so it actually is panning out nicely for him here. It is, and he's, yeah, and obviously the mox, uh, mox heavy. Yeah, in the sense that it's got one mox, it's a mox heavy hand in, <laughs> so in the Highlander. Is this a threat? If this is a threat, then we we have pressure. Oh, Grim Luck. Oh man, I mean that's, that's threat a and really a half. Good, yeah. Like I'm, I'm sure that if uh, he's if, going after those. One oh, one, yeah, isn't he? Yes, absolutely. And this is something that people often don't do often enough, which is just keep burning the dorks. And Brennan can't and then, do anything yeah. except just like play a dude, right? That's a horizon canopy. I think it's just something a land. Like Windswept no, heave. No, it's horizon canopy. Windswept. Windswept heave. Yeah. Is it? I think so. Well, yeah, he's shocking, so he's obviously getting a shock land off it. I don't know. I have no idea what these new new fandangled cards are. And what's that fandangled card? It's a sacred card? boundary, Sarban. Why do you know that? How do you know because this? Because I play online and everyone plays with like uh, really cool arts online. Like, oh, I'm, I'm online. I'm playing with these arts that are so <laughs> Ooh, hard to get. Like $600 lands. <laughs> so there's the Grim Lava Mancer exiling uh, uh, the cards to kill that Vizier. But here's Harsh Mentor. Harsh Lovely. Mentor is relevant. Very yeah. lovely. If you don't know how to mentor, combo, it does what? <laughs> uh, it, it goes, it goes, um, and that's a, the wrong art, Sylvan Scrying. So Harsh Mentor uh, triggers to do two damage anytime you activate an ability of mm-hmm. basically not Planeswalker, like land and artifact and creature. It's really well. good if you can yeah. get it out um, nice and early yeah. and it, it actually gets it's, the fetch lands because yeah. the fetch lands will ping yeah. you. Is that correct? You'll be 100% 
um, amazed at the fact that Harsh Mentor is literally turning off Brendan's combo. Mm-hmm. He can't activate it. He can't mm-hmm. activate it. It, it, it fits a sort of Eidolon role in the sense that um, you can bash with it and you, you'd be happy to like just trade and get a bit of damage in, but you can also just hold back on it and just sit there and stop Brendan from being able to do things because he doesn't want to take the damage. Mm-hmm. And he's almost got two cards like that because he's got Grim Love Mentor and Harsh Mentor. Yeah, yeah. This is essentially so, Luke is playing control right now, which is so weird. But he did it. You know, he 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 burnt the dudes to slow Brendan down and disrupt the game plan. But he is a five minus spell. Oh, about a skull. Oh. I was going to say if that's Thrag Tusk, yeah. he'd be right back. Thrag in it. Tusk is fantastic, but Batter Skull is very vulnerable. So two to the face here. End of turn, just two to the face. And uh, remember that Batiscale can't really re-equip because Harsh Mental costs two. Oh, oh Tid Street Hooligan. <laughs> that hooligan coming into my neighbourhood, killing all my Batiscales. Yeah, there was right. just like what we were saying. I can <laughs> guarantee Sarvan, so good. <laughs> Sarvan and I did not see this match before commenting, but <laughs> it's just like what we said. I mean, that's why I love it. Thrag Task makes all the difference because Thrag Task there yeah. gains the five life first. And, you know, even if he had a, a removal spell that wasn't the Tin Street, um, at least you're left with a 3-3. Three, three. And what a difference that would make having yeah. a 3-3. Three, three, and getting five swung, life up. Getting swung, yeah, and five life up, getting swung by um, three 2-2s. Two <laughs> or a 2-3, but yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so, pro tip, try not to activate that query in yeah. <laughs> But, oh, okay. oh, no, we have a game on our hands. Yeah, yeah, is this right. Hornet? If, if this is Hornet Queen, okay. oh, I'm gonna be, this Hornet... is going to be so exciting. <laughs> Hornet Queen still sort of gets done by the Grim Love Mancer, right? Uh, but it's four, a little bit. But it's but but it's but it's four one one death touches. It is four one one death touches <laughs> against a team of four dudes. It's pretty four good. Dudes. Like, but surely if it's it can't be Hornet Queen because if it was Hornet Queen, it would be slammed. Up. He just rips it out of the deck and slams it on the table. Thrag Tusk. Yeah. All right, Thrag Tusk. It's it's a stabilizer. It's no Hornet Queen. We got excited, <laughs> excited but unfortunately you know. for Brendan, who's gonna he's who is going to probably block Harsh Mentor here. Um, the Grim Love Mats will then kill Thrag Tusk. Yes. He'll get the three three. Do the same <gasps> thing on the um, Kurt Ape. Get killed. Um, and so Luke will actually eventually still have Tin Street Hooligan. And uh, a Goblin Guide and a Grim Lava Mancer up, which is enough. But uh, it's a good stall. It's a really good stall. You know, yeah. it does it does what he needs it to do. It kills the Harsh Mentor so that he can activate some kind of combo. But look at his life total dropping to five, and then he's uh, he's, oh, yeah. he's, yeah, he's got the got the well, Grim Lava maybe, Mancer ready. Maybe Luke's sitting there going, "Do I kill Thrag, or yeah, do it's... I just like burn your face three times?" I think you just burn your face, burn the face, because the Thrag Tusk yeah. is irrelevant. It's just a blocker, right? Mm. And he's just going to keep pushing damage anyway. So. Yeah, Kytheon and just, yeah, pass yeah, it I think that's a really good point is yep. there's no difference between it being a 5-3 and it being a 3-3, right? Yeah. Like it blocks and trades with okay. the dude. That's all that matters. So here he, he burns the bop because it'll net a little, it'll net the same amount of damage and get rid of a bop. Um, and now he just swings with everything and yeah. triggers Kytheon. Right. That's it. Well played from Look Luke. And um, yeah, it shows the, the, so the zoo, the difference between Burn and Zoo, where Zoo has a few of those creatures like Grim Lava Applying Mancer constant and, pressure. and Harsh Mentor, yeah. That, yeah, as you say, and the creatures themselves that yeah. apply constant pressure rather than Burn um, yeah. burn Pressure. And um, interesting to see the Moxes, they worked, uh, at least the Emerald worked really well there. Yeah, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, you know, it, he was quite land flooded, mm. but it ended up working out nicely against Strip Mines and Wastelands, and uh, the Moxen were essentially pseudo additional lands in that respect. They didn't give a broken turn one start, but they, they did the job. Of, uh, of the mana uh, over the course of the rest of the game. So anyway, that was a really, really fun match to watch. Congrats to Luke. And we will be back in round three with more Highlander action for you. Looking forward to it.